the Hrad. Welcome, gentle listener. I am Baldemort, your faithful servant, and I wish to introduce you to the forces, factions, and faces of the Warhammer 40k setting, the grim darkness of the far future, where there is no time for peace. There is only time for war. And today, as promised, we shall be discussing one of the most ancient, dangerous, and menacing of all of the species in the setting. Haunting creatures from the very first age of the galaxy, they have somehow endured through all of the epochs of the universe. Never carving out a huge system-spanning empire of their own, at least to our knowledge, this species have nonetheless been seen in near every segmentum and sector of the galaxy. A force of nature, a thing of terror. They are everywhere and nowhere, hidden in plain sight or clustering in their subterranean warrens. Like the Morlocks of H.G. Wells, they are a hidden danger that comes to the surface to scavenge and to enslave. Yet their powers are manifest, multiple, and quite, quite deadly. Few can resist their power, Fewer can take the battle to their inner sanctums with even a hope of success. Of course, I can only be speaking of the antediluvian Hrad. Now, usually, we would hear a wee ditty from the board library, but I have to admit I've not been particularly well, and I'm working on some whoppers again, so please do forgive me the omission this once. I did write something, but it was not worthy of your gentle listening. Hence... We move on to the meat of the matter instead. Even a bald can err, it seems. My apologies. The Hrad. An important race for so many reasons. A terrifyingly dangerous one. But few there are that have truly drawn their related details together. They have existed in the setting from the very early iterations altering in the shake-up that brought the setting more in line with its present flavour, pitch and tempo. Yet, they have always been there. Once seen as a skaven analogue, this is no longer the case, and this is right and proper, for their law is the exact equivalent of this. They have always been there. For the Hrad are one of the few races that managed to escape the exterminations of the war in heaven. They are survivors of that period along with the Eldar, Krok, Knib, Rashan, Jakero, and their nemeses, the Necrons. And like many of the races of that period, I personally feel that they have signals and signs that they were part of the evolution of the warrior races forged by the Old Ones in their struggle against the Necron Tyr and their star gods, the Dread Katarn but we shall get to that in due course. So, what exactly are the Hrad? And this is the rub, for there are scant details on them for such an ancient and ubiquitous antagonist, for none are allies and all are enemies to the Hrad. But what do we know? There lies the horror. The Hrad are a creeping race, that survive through being broken into tribes that act more like resistant cells than anything else. As with the analogy, they are hard to stamp out, for they rarely congregate in large numbers and avoid the view of others by hiding deep in the earth. Hrad clusters are near impossible to discern because of this. But even if one stood next to you, if it did not move, you would not be able to see it, unless it wished this to be so or had moved at speed. The Hrad are the perfect assassins, although they never act in this way, for they throw out a sort of mental chaff effect, some say, others that they are lost in time and displace themselves so that whenever you look at them, they are shifting so much that they exist in the present for such a short flickering period that the human eye cannot make them out. Others still believe that they throw off some form of a field of, well poisons, and mist that make them hard to see. Whatever the truth of the matter, they are shrouded so that none can see them at all, a form of stealth that would match those of certain Primarchs, 
and I do not say that lightly. If one can see them, come across them unawares, or are captured and forced to live amongst them, well, it is not a vista worthy of song. Ha! Many would lose their gorge just at the sight of them, for they are not constructed in a normal way at all. They are covered in necrotic flesh that does not have a central skeleton outside of a spinal column. Their four limbs can move in ways that are both disconcerting and difficult to predict, hence their common subriquet amongst the lower orders of the Imperial forces being Bendies. Their faces feature not only teeth but mandibles as well, all below to oversized black orbs of eyes. Built for nocturnal or subterranean living, their eyes are vulnerable to light, causing them great discomfort. It is also surmised that they have no ability to see color, but that the accuracy of their vision in the dark is beyond compare. Their very skin is covered in dead flesh, but they have no connection to Nurgle whatsoever, for they are said to be the creations of the Old Ones, and the last of these anomalous beings, Kar, was meant to be their main protector. Perhaps he was the last Old One and able to escape the genocide of its race by holding back, hiding, and protecting the Harad, never getting involved in the war. For the Harad myths tell of how Kar, their god, instructed them to retreat from the surface of their world and dwell forever in the dark beneath the ground. A tactic that has seemed to be well founded, for both the Hrod and Kar did indeed survive the war in heaven. But this is far from all. For the Hrod can exude horrific toxins from their extremities. Some say that they are collected in their shoulder regions. Yet these toxins can be sent to the ends of their limbs, their hands, to be used against any that assail them. Then we get to possibly their most dangerous ability, their relationship with time itself. Now the Hrad are so ephemeral and ill-defined as they decompose at such rates that they can never ever be studied. When a Hrad lets its last breath leave its body, the process begins almost instantaneously. The rotting flesh of their exteriors then falls in upon the organic core and they pretty much liquefy before your eyes. But they can never be vivisected, for when any attempt to capture them, this process seems to be performed at the will of the Hrad. None have ever been taken alive. None have ever interrogated a Hrad. And this is far from the worst of it. When a Hrad infestation gets to a critical mass, have enough of them present, like a war. Then they throw out an ever-increasingly powerful chronological disruption field, and this is only as powerful as the amount of Hrad present. When they mass for war, the Hrad field can be incredibly powerful and fast-acting. Armies that have been sent into Hrad warrens have been destroyed through decrepitude. In other words, the Hrad aged them. This chronological disruption field can make seconds into hours, hours into days, days into months. This can change the very nature of combat, as the inner materials of munitions can become inert, while the casings erode away and make them explode early. The Rod can dance through time, while their opponents move in seemingly slow motion compared to them. The warriors of their enemies, and even the war gear that they carry, is subject to this aging effect. Space Marine Warplate, their power armor, has been broken down under rust and erosion in seconds, breaking off so that the Marines themselves were exposed to the effect. And Astartes can live many times the lifespan of a baseline human, yet even these gene-enhanced warriors are left with their hair falling out, their eyes dimming, their joints seizing and their hearts failing through old age. This is rare, for cultural reasons, as a Harad will most often break into tribes when they get even close to the numbers for this field to begin to form. The sundering is done logically, formally, and without antagonism between the new groups. Like a tribe that knows their hunting grounds cannot sustain them any more, the Harad will split into separate groups and then part ways. The smaller, newly formed tribe will then migrate in search of a new home. Most often, 
The Frauds seem to choose planets which have had previous settlements, or even existing ones. This is thought to be so that they can scavenge from the ruins or underbelly of said cultures. They will steal technology, artifacts, and items of utility from whomever shared or shares their world. The Frad are often called parasites and that they infest regions. But this is a diminishing statement that, although accurate, it utterly ignores their true pedigree, ability, and threat. When they are attacked, they can sometimes call for support from others of their kind, although it is not known how. When a massive amount of them cluster, their fields can break down the very minerals of the worlds on which they reside, and it can eventually become so potent that the core of a world can die, the planet itself aged out. In one event, their fields were so strong, so many of them were present, that they even affected and aged the star. Imagine that. The Rod may be scavengers, may be dungeon dwellers, but they should not be viewed as irrelevant, for they are far from stupid. They have advanced technology of their own. They even have starships and heavy ordnance. Their tech seems to utilize their innate abilities, of course. The Rod Fusil is such an example. A rifle that will fire a plasma ball or even just straight blast that seems to be merged with the traits of a melter weapon. On top of this, the very discharge, the shot or stream, will slip through time as it travels. In this way, the blast can pass through near any defenses but a void shield. Terminator armor means nothing if the weapon passes straight through it and only activates when it strikes flesh, eh? And this is not all, for they have been witness to fire large weapons that will disrupt what they hit, sending it back in time to before it was created, or sending it so far forward in time that it simply rots or erodes away in seconds, or nastily, when they overlap in time and a person or thing coexists with itself. The two forms existing in the same place means that a vast explosion of phenomenal power is set off, annihilating everything around them. Nothing can survive such an attack. And the Hrud are not wordless beings such as a Jukero. They keep incredibly detailed histories of their tribes, are willing to fight to the death to protect their tomes full of their history. And when a tribe has to shatter itself to prevent the numbers growing to activate the chrono field, then they copy that which is, and then add to a new history for the newly formed sub-tribe. They are not merely shadow creepers, nor infesting rodents. They are a race that have learned how to survive. When they migrate, either due to their worlds dying to the chronological field, or when discovered and attacked, none can fathom how this is truly done. Forhrad can be found in their own ships, of course, but often they can be found in the lower decks of Imperial vessels, or others, space hulks, or even orc vessels, hiding with their stealth fields so that none know that they are there. Yet the small folk and serfs often get that feeling or seem one when the Hrud or Bendy is not prepared for their advent. Yet none know how they get onto the ships, nor how they get off them afterwards for they only use other people's vessels for transport, never for permanent residence. Some postulate that they use the webway to travel, for they are a race of the old ones. Some state that they form corridors in time and transport themselves that way, but nobody knows for certain, and nobody ever will. They are rare in that they have no central world, no empire, and rarer still in that they are antagonistic to any who confront them, but do not go out of their way to attack others. They are pure survivors, and this is what I find so interesting about them, for they are, inarguably, a child race of the old ones. But where did they come in the timescape, in the evolution of the warrior races? I have previously compared the Quark to a late-stage weapon race, as they seem to smooth out the issues of independence that the Eldar had in such abundance, and the Old Ones could not really use them in the wars that they had intended for them. By this time in the war, the Eldar lacked respect for their makers. 
and the Jikero I consider to be an earlier race also, as the Quark do everything they do, but in a very strange and far more effective way when considering it only for the use of war. The Hrad are odd in that they too have a field generated by numbers, like a war in their field that affects time, but they are not a warrior race at all. Ka, their defender and guide, if not outright creator, did not breed into them the warlike urge to dominate and destroy, as it so clearly did in the Orcs and Eldar. It bred abilities that would permit the Hrad to simply survive, and structured their society for exactly the same point alone. For if the Hrad were truly girt for war, could they not cluster and then simply move through star systems and burn out their suns, destroy entire armadas of ships and forces by simply arriving in numbers? Yet would this have helped them against the Necrons or the Catan? For both are made of Necrodermis, and this is utterly immune to the march of time. So, were the Hrad given gifts that would permit them to survive against other races of the Old Ones, or was the Chronofield designed so they can confuse and sandbag even the Necrons and their masters for long enough for them to migrate away from the threat? But what would be the point? Why would Kar make such a race at all? Strange. Now some have thought that they might be linked to the Eldar, as they have the same pantheon of gods, it seems. But then, the Old Ones are the templates. So is this so strange? And the Iron Warriors of the Great Crusade faced them, and one Biologus considered that the Hrad might be humans from the far future, fleeing an even grimmer and darker period of time. Now this is ludicrous indeed, but it does have a few tiny merits as a concept. For the most advanced human ship of the Dark Age of Technology, the Spirit of Eternity was sent to the end of time, and it came back with a warning to all of humanity. Alas, it was a warning that landed on the ignorant and deaf ears of the humanity of the Imperium. They viciously tortured and executed the captain and crew of the ship, who had surrendered to what they considered enlightened brethren humans. They were not to know what the humanity of the age of the Imperium had become. But why do I bring up this oddity? Well, the most advanced and terrifying weapon that was used by this, the most advanced ship humanity had ever created before the fall from grace, before the days of old night. It had a weapon that could phase time, a move a ship or any target into a different time stream, and then superimpose it over itself. And when the two collided, the destruction was amazing. And this seems to be exactly like that of the Hrad capital weapons. A tenuous link, I know, as the Golden Age humanity may have simply observed the Hrad weapon and then emulated it. Monke see, Monke do, after all. And so we get to the conclusion. The largest migration ever seen was when the Lord of Iron, Perturabo, sent his legion in to destroy a gathering of Hrad, and his only way of doing this was to use stasis technology and his Primarch abilities and intellect to defeat them. And the costs were absolutely eye-watering, even for the Iron Warriors. The Hrad have always avoided engagements whenever they can, migrating when discovered, always keeping their individual cells small and secreted. But the legend of Ka which is covered in more depth in my recent video on the Umbra, states that he will one day return and lead them in the war against the Evil Ones, obviously being the Necrons. So, worryingly, one can never know the number of the Hrad. They simply hide too well. But what if, just what if, like the Fremen of Arrakis, they are not vagrants and vagabonds lurking beneath the notice of the Lansrad? But like the Fremen, they actually exist in vast, vast numbers. Forever hidden amongst the stars, forever waiting for the rallying call from a dead god. But what if Ka does reform? What happens if he calls them all together? What then, Imperium, Eldar, Tau, or even Necrons? 
could anything or anyone stop them? Only chaos can possibly stand against Ahrad, for time has no meaning to the Neverborn. Only they. My final point is a personal one. For the Hrad, to me, represent something that I feel is slipping away, if it has not already gone. The horror element of the setting. Now some will point to the Chaos Gods and laugh. But that is not true horror. That is body horror, usually. It is very human. It is temptation and corruption. But it is now known. When Rogue Trader came out, the universe of Warhammer was so much darker, for all its tongue-in-cheek humour, because it had something that no longer seems to exist. The threat of the unknown. The game was conceived as a dark parody of Star Trek in many regards, but where Kirk gets his leg over and Spock raises his eyebrow as they traipse from one light-hearted romp to the next, the voyages of a rogue trader were exercises in discovering and confronting the very darkest horrors out there. Anything could happen. Anything could be on any world one visited. And this, the unknown, the unknowable, the fear of the deepest, darkest woods, the dread of an open desert cold under the starlight, this was the premise for the setting. And I just feel that the constant light being shed onto every nook and cranny is taking away from that which is most terrifying of all, the darkness of the unknown. I have been Baldemort, your faithful servant. Do please consider liking and subscribing. If you do, then hit the notification button, as I would not want you to miss out. As I have not been at my best, I may have missed a few details in this video, for brevity, so I will link a collection from other Adept Lore Slingers, just in case you wish to delve deeper into the nitty-gritty of this fascinating species. Now, no matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun. Toodaloo.